Hello beauties. Happy April. I'm so glad that you guys are here. We are going to move on to project number five, the sweet little birdie card. They all have these sweet little birds on them and I just love, love, love them. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to cut the time of the video down a bit. I encourage you guys, if you are, um, if this is the first video that you have come across for the April stamp of the month series, I encourage you guys go um, to the YouTube channel and find the video that was filmed first in this series. It is labeled projects number one and projects number two project number one and project number two um they are the two cute little mini album pages that we put together and there are other uh cards that we filmed thus far again cute little birdies right and we have one left to go but this is the six project pre-cut kit that you guys can get totally free when you place a qualifying order during the month of april um and it is my gift to you there is no cost for it um you don't pay shipping or anything like that it's just really my gift to you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to get this done and we're going to try to abbreviate it a little bit um, because you're going to want to go back and watch that first video, watch the videos before this because um, I, I've not been repeating all of the steps just to kind of keep it a little bit shorter for you guys to uh, get through. So we're going to go ahead and take care of our watercoloring first. Um, and I did, as I mentioned many times, I have already stamped it in our permanent black ink and I have um, trimmed it out so you guys don't have to watch me do all of that on camera because it does take a little bit of time. I'm putting a little tiny bit of, of Tombow on the back of it so it can kind of hold it in place. And that just gives me the ability to kind of turn this around without getting my fingers in all of the ink. So we're going to go ahead and grab our stamp pads. Um, I just think this is such a fun concept, you guys. Um, and the fun, the, the super fun part is that you guys all most likely have ink pads. If you're watching, most likely you have an ink pad. And so this is a way that we can get on palette matches for the Close to My Heart's uh, colors. And um, if you don't have all of the markers and you're not really great at blending and getting those exact tone on tone matches, this is a wonderful solution. So we are gonna use uh, shortbread and toffee for our little bird base here. And as I have done each time, I'm just smushing my ink pad together so we get a little bit of ink on the palette. Honestly, I've done this enough times, I probably don't even need to smush it um, because it is, um, I have paint on the palette. But um, we are going to um, use a watercolor brush without water Water in the brush. As I had mentioned in the other videos, I'm not great uh, with controlling the water that comes out and I just tend to make a mess, kind of like liquid adhesive. So um, I have using it as a regular paintbrush. So it is dry on the inside, but you guys um, know it kind of goes without saying that if you find that your color is too bold, right? I always have a paper towel and a little bit of scratch paper here uh, next to my little um, watercolor dish. Uh, if you guys find that it is too uh, bold, you can... Um, you can uh, tone that color down by adding a little more water in the lid of your ink pad. And then vice versa, if you guys want it a little bit uh, bolder, a little bit darker, um, less muted, then you will want to add less water. This is so beautiful and I just love this concept because I am a very, uh, when I... Um, when I color things in, whether we're using pencils or markers or anything like that, I like to go um, all the way to the edge. I'm usually a very slow colorer because I don't want to get outside the lines. Um, the cool thing about this technique, using your ink pads for the, the coloring, is that um, it, it just blends really nicely. It really does take on that watercolor effect where it's all going to kind of blend together nicely. And you don't really have to pay just as close of attention to, um, you know, coloring in the lines and all of that good stuff. It's, it's kind of supposed to look, to look a little, um, more abstract, if you will. And abstract is hard for me. I'm pretty sure I've said that in every single video this month. Abstract is really, really hard for me. I struggle with that. I want all the lines to be perfect and straight and where they're supposed to be and it's just kind of a struggle but this has really challenged me and I just love the look so I'm not really um, paying too much attention about getting up near the the flowers and the leaves that are you know the decorative nature of this little bird here I am just kind of adding a little bit of color down um, we've started again with the shortbread we added a little bit of toffee. I may go back in and just kind of blend those two together. They blend so nice because we are doing this on watercolor paper. Now, you're not going to get this nice of a 
um, a, a look of, of, you know, it's not going to do near pretty of a job if you guys are just using regular white cardstock because it's going to peel and it's going to curl and it's just not very pretty at all. But this watercolor paper is actually made um, to take the, the water and it won't curl and it won't get all gnarly and all of that good stuff. So we're going to be done with the toffee and the shortbread because I'm super happy with what this looks like. And again, the longer that it dries, the more beautiful that it's going to look. This is, I forgot to mention, but I was using again, the largest of the two water brushes uh, for the bird. Now for the petals and the leaves, I'm going to use the smaller of the two. And again, we're just using it the very same way. Um, in the um, using my little water tray without water actually up in the brush. So I'm thinning this down because I want a really light um, peach apricot look. And again, never don't be afraid to test it over um, on your scratch paper or your paper towel. I am just quickly going to color this in. Again, if you get outside the lines or you don't go all the way to the edge, it is totally fine. It looks beautiful. That's really kind of the look that I was particularly going for. If you guys want to do more of that, um, you know, detailed coloring and you want every bit of the surface to be, have a color on it and you're going to go all the way to the lines and, and want to take your time to do that, well, I think that is awesome. I just am trying uh, to embrace this more abstract bit of art. And like I said, it's really hard for me. It's really hard for me. So we're gonna be done with the papaya. We're gonna bring in our pine. And I have been using in the previous classes, I didn't really dilute the pine much. I wanted it to be pretty bold. Um, so we are going to be laying down color really, really dark. So you can probably see in my little scratch paper over here, it is as bold as any marker that you would use. And that is kind of the look that I was going for. So I am now going to, um, since I am using rather a dry, a dry-ish brush, right? There's not very much water on there because I wanted that bold color. Um, I need to be a little more careful where I place it um, because, you know, that I'm learning as I'm learning and I'm, you know, YouTubing things and trying to learn from people that are much smarter than me regarding uh, the watercoloring and that kind of thing, um, that the uh, what we had been doing kind of with the birdie is what they um, call a wet on wet technique where you're actually laying down a lot of water and the water will kind of transport that color across that surface. And so we're doing the opposite of that with the flower, the flowers and the leaves. We, we are not using water to kind of... Um, make that travel around. I am using, um, it's more, it's more like a marker if we were going to be coloring it with a marker. So I just wanted to be a little bit more careful, um, about where I placed it. And I am super, super happy with that. Oh my gosh. You know what I forgot guys? We didn't do the tail. Oh my word. Okay. So we're going to quickly reach over here. Let's do toffee on the tail. I think we can make that work. Okay. Grab our toffee and we will color in that tail. I don't know what in the world I was doing. Poor little birdie. Okay, that is a little bit dark. So let's grab our shortbread again. And we'll just kind of blend that out a little bit. You guys can see it is so easy to do. It's so easy. It's just, oh man, where has this been all my life? I don't know what I was thinking, being afraid because it's so fun. Okay. So we'll add a little tiny bit more toffee right up here to kind of blend that over. Perfect. Okay. I love that. Okay. Now we're going to be done for sure this time. Whoops. Good grief, Suze. Okay. So we are done with our painting. Now we can go ahead and jump to assembling the rest of the card. So let me get this out of the way. <clears throat> and we'll be ready to go. So this one is not going to take us very long at all. We're going to set our birdie aside so that he can be drying. Uh, it won't take very long, but you guys are quickly going to notice that it is much prettier when it dries. So I have all of my pieces here ready to go. We're going to go ahead and get the stamping done. We're going to stamp the sweet little footprints. 
you may or may not be able to see them on camera, but the sweet little footprints across our green pattern paper, and we're also gonna stamp the You're So Sweet on the little white scalloped piece as well. So let's go ahead and um, on the instances when I don't have much of a border to um, have my magnet hold my piece down, I just do a little bit of cheating and I just add a little tiny bit of Tombow and place it down. It sticks right to the foam and, and that just works really, really well for me. Um, if you guys are not big on stamping platforms or maybe you do not have the dexterity issues that I have occasionally when the trimmers are kind of acting up, then you probably don't need a stamping platform. But for me, they were an absolute godsend. And what I learned when I began using a platform over a year ago, I guess it has been over a year now, that um, I feel like I fell in love with stamping in a way that I had never felt before. Um, I Stamping, it was always one of those things like I struggled to get a really nice image no matter how careful I was. And then if I wasn't, I wasn't happy with the image, then I would just toss it away. And I felt like it was kind of a pain. It took a long time um, to get an image I was really happy with. And um, when I didn't get one, I was wasting paper. And it was just super frustrating. And so honestly, stamping just like wasn't... I wasn't my go-to. I did stamp. I was a stamper. Um, I'm still a stamper, but it just wasn't my go-to. I didn't really have a love of it. And using a stamping platform has given me a love of stamping now. It's much easier to do. Um, it's much more forgiving. And I just encourage you guys, if maybe you struggle with some of those things, um, try a platform. Try a stamping platform. There's lots of them on the market. I do use the Misty's. I have all three sizes and um, they just are, they just really work well for me. Um, since I was not super concerned about this being a per perfection of an image because it is on that darker pattern paper, um, I did use my block rather than the platform. Again, just to save a little bit of time and, it, and this uh, pattern of paper and as dark it is, as it is was really, um, as I said, really forgiving. So we've got this piece done. We have our white scallop piece done. We will go ahead and we will put our um, multi-layer flower into our um, embossing folder. Um, this is the, the uh, watercolor paper that's included in your kits for each of the projects. As I said um, in one of the earlier videos, videos, you guys do not have to purchase any consumable supplies with the exception of your dots that you will color with the copper paint marker. Um, you can grab any color of dots because the copper paint marker, they are a little bit different than the alcohol markers in the respect that the alcohol markers tend to still show a bit, like a hint of the color underneath, like the color of the original, the, the dot. You can still see a little bit of that. Now, the awesome thing about the paint markers that we are carrying, um, they completely cover it solid. So you can have all mixed, matched um colors of dots, maybe you're using up, um, you know, some leftovers and things like that. Um, you can't tell, you can't tell what color, um, the dots are. And so it's awesome. And it's a great way to use up your little leftovers or your little stragglers. So, um, we're just going to pop these in here, all three of them. I do, um, I do use my close to my heart embossing machine and I use it on the embossing the dial is over to emb the embossing uh, setting. And then I always back off on the tension and make it looser. I'm doing this off camera so you guys do not have the table shaking where the camera is. Um, but again, I will mention one more time, you guys will definitely, whoops, you guys will definitely want to um, hop over and watch the videos that streamed prior to this one. Um, because again, the, the longer that I go in the month, we, I'm abbreviating just so you're not hearing the same thing every time, right? Just to make the videos a little bit uh, shorter for you. So um, you're missing a lot of stuff if this is your first one is what, is what it amounts to. Um, we will go ahead and begin building. This um, little floral piece is going to have three out of four even borders. That's kind of a thing for me sometimes. I prefer that. That's a good look. My creative eye enjoys that. So I have the even border around these three sides. And then we've got this one over here to, just to add a little bit of um, interest. So that one is placed closer to the left than it is the right. Okay. Um, this little guy, I have the footprints on the top. You can place them on the bottom if you would rather. And this green pattern paper, 
um, the, I don't really have a measurement. It's, I don't know, seven eighths, maybe a little tiny bit under an inch uh, from the bottom. Whoops, look at me. We wanna make sure we put this down on the card base first, okay? That is because this one is a little different than any of them that we've done thus far. Um, this is gonna go all the way to the edge of the card base. We, we don't normally do that. That's not something I usually do because I like that white border around the outer edge. But this um, green piece spanned all the way across. I am going to refold this. Sometimes the score lines do not um, line up perfectly from the factory. Okay, now back in business. Okay, so we've got an eighth of an inch border around the outer edge. Place this down. Now we'll bring our green piece in. And that's just gonna span from the left edge of the card base all the way over to the right edge of the card base. Okay, then we will grab our, we've got our cute little um, scalloped piece here. We will grab our birdie and put a little bit of foam tape on the back of him. I love, love, love the, the bleeding. It's like the colors just kind of blend together, you guys. It's awesome. I love it. I just love it. I'm telling you, you are going to see this uh, in the future. I absolutely love it. So I've got a few dots. We, um, we are going to pop these up. That's kind of my, how I roll. I love to mention on all the things. If you guys would rather have a flat card, then of course you can omit the foam tape and not add that additional um, layer on there. It's up to you, but I love me some foam tape on all the things, all of the things. So I am going to place Tombo on the back of our white scalloped piece and we are gonna make it flush with the green Unless you guys want to kind of tuck it back underneath, you can do that. We'll tuck it back underneath a little bit so it'll sit down a bit more on the green. Okay, so, oh my gosh, that's going to be perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some glue dots and we will add our flower petals together. These are just the medium size that we use. You guys can use any of them that you would like. I really love glue dots for this kind of thing because it's just a really super duper quick um, bit of adhesive. I don't have to wait for liquid um, adhesive to dry. And I don't have to worry about Tombow um, kind of smushing those embossed layers down either. Okay, so then we'll grab our little leaves. These are baby leaves compared to some of the others that we have been using this month. And I always like to place my elements together before I worry about placing them on the card. It's just, to me, it's just much easier to place down one single focal element rather than worrying about, you know, you get your flower adjusted. Well, then you have to figure out where you're going to do with your leaves and then you're pulling things up and it's just feels like it's more work than necessary. So I just like to do it um, a little bit, I feel a little easier. I may actually, let's see. Okay, I think that's gonna work just fine. We're gonna go ahead and place this one down. We'll peel off the backing of our dots. and scoot it over next to our stamped sentiment. So we have plenty of room on the left here to place our dimensional flower. Now, once we get this down, we will peel up our layers because that's just how we roll, right? Um, kind of see where we're gonna place our dots. I'm gonna go ahead and place a couple here. I might need to add another one or two. That's gonna give us a nice flush area to put our little flower on. That's gonna be perfect. Oh my gosh, perfect, perfect. Okay, again, much easier than kind of wrangling each individual element on here. Place it all together as one single piece and make it a little easier for yourself. Okay, so look there, guys. We're done except for dots. 
So I'm just kind of peeling up this top layer of these petals. That's my favorite thing to do with this five petal flower. This is one of my uh, favorite Cricut flowers in all of the Close to My Heart cartridges. This is probably the Cricut flower I've used the absolute most in our cartridges. Um, I, I just really, really do like it. So I am peeling off my dots. I've already used the paint marker to color them in. You guys, again, I, I kind of talked through a lot of that in previous videos, but what I'm doing here is there's usually a little, um, little bit of dried paint around the bottom edge of the dots. And so if you just take it and kind of wiggle it in between your fingers, that'll just kind of bust that um, bit of, dot of um, dried paint off of there. And um, it really does seem to work really, really well. Now, if you guys are, um, if you've not done all of your dots at once, that's something I do encourage you that, um, again, start at the beginning of the month, guys. Go to project no number one and two video. And I'm, I'm much more thorough in that video than I am in the videos after that. But um, what you might want to do is go ahead and get all of your dots colored with the marker. Um, and it really is just as easy as coloring them, okay? Um, but go ahead and get all of your dots that you're going to need for all of your projects colored and out of the way. That way, by the time you get to the project, they're all good and dried. Okay, so you don't have to wait on them to keep going back and forth. So that's all there is to it for project number five, guys. We've got one more for the month of April, but it's just beautiful. I love them. I just love them. These are a little bit different. You can see the original here is a little bit darker than the one we did today. And it'll be interesting to see when that gets completely dry, kind of what it looks like, but I just absolutely love them. I am, I am borderline obsessed with this um, painting with the stamp pads. I hope that you guys are having a good time while you are maybe learning to do that yourself, or um, maybe you're a seasoned pro and you could give me some tips. Um, either way, you're welcome to leave a comment below. I would be so happy to hear from you. Thanks so much uh, for watching guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.